Happy one year anniversary of CrowdStrike causing a global outage. I'm Ali Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. On July 19th, Microsoft announced the discovery of a zero-day flaw in their SharePoint servers. The CVE CVE 2025-53700 was awarded a CVSS score of 9.8. At the time of the original announcement, Microsoft had tracked that the CVE led to the compromise of over 75 company servers, including governments and major corporations. The CVE is an exploit chain that has been named Toolshell by Code White GmbH, which builds off of CVE 2025-49706 and CVE 2025-49704. CVE 2025-49706 is an earlier CVE that allows users to bypass authentication based on a header. That was patched, but the new CVE finds a bypass for the patch. The exploit was originally found in the wild by the team at iSecurity on July 18th. The zero day takes advantage of the way SharePoint handles the deserialization and control render via ViewState. ViewState is used by the ASP.NET page framework to store page and control values. Now with the toolshell chain, attackers appear to extract the validation key directly from memory or configuration. Once this cryptographic material is leaked, the attacker can craft fully valid signed view state payloads using a tool called WISO Serial. These payloads can embed any malicious commands and are accepted by the server as trusted input, completing the RCE chain without requiring credentials. This mirrors the design weakness exploited in 2021, but now packaged into a modern modern zero-day chain with automatic shell drop, full persistence, and zero authentication. The actual CVE was reported to only affect on-premises SharePoint server instances. Online SharePoint instances for Microsoft 365 are said to not be impacted. The exploit was also quickly added to the KEV list by CISA, demonstrating the urgency and severity of this CVE. At first report, Microsoft did not have a patch available for the Toolshell RCE. Within the day, they announced mitigations and protection guidance and ended it with publishing a security update. In U.S. cyber news, the Department of Defense has received an injection of funds to go on the cyber offensive. In the recently passed bill, a $1 billion allocation has been made to the Department of Defense to bolster U.S. cyber offensive operations over a four-year period. There does exist an extreme lack of clarity around what this means and how, just that there is money going into cyber offensive. This comes into direct contrast with the aggressive slashing of budget for U.S. defensive cyber operations, including the gutting of CISA, budget reductions, and employee layoffs. Given the gutting that has occurred to the defensive, some senators have spoken out in concern that this will invite cyber retaliation. We will just have to wait and see what happens and what exactly these cyber offensive operations entail. A few episodes ago, I covered that the ransomware group Hunters International was shutting down, well, technically undergoing a rebrand. The rebrand was originally leaked in late 2024 where they were moving to focus on extortion and data theft. So yes, the ransomware group has shut down, but their rebrand, World Lakes, has been active. WorldLeaks has actually been active since January 2025 and has hit 49 organizations, their most recent being Dell, threatening to leak its product demonstration platform. Dell has confirmed to Bleeping Computer that WorldLeaks did in fact have access to this custom software. A threat actor recently gained access to our solution center, an environment designed to demonstrate our products and test proof of concept for Dell's commercial customers, Dell told Bleeping Computer. It is intentionally separated from customer and partner systems, as well as Dell's network and is not used in the provision of services to Dell customers. Since the confirmation of the original ransom of data, WorldLeaks has added Dell to their list of victims and has begun the process of sharing some of the stolen data. So while just a few weeks ago, that same group was giving away ransomware keys, this week they're still ransoming, but just in a different way. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of July 21st, 2025. If you want to support the show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. DEF CON is coming up. I just ordered some more ThreatWire stickers to give away, so if you see me at DEF CON, please come up and say hi. 
In the meantime, if you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Ally. As a reminder, I'm Ally Diamond. Thank you so much for watching. And as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.